this episode, we'll talk about setting up the test infrastructure for unit tests in the test pyramid. So it'll allow you to test small functions for testing things such as Redux functions, fear functions, or other functions that have business logic in them. Okay, let's create a new repository for the screencast. Every screencast I do, you'll be able to find up here uh, on the TDD TV GitHub page for you to be able to download and play with it. The new repository, let's call this Minicast Setup Just Unit Tests. Let's go ahead and clone this down. Git clone. Let's open WebStorm and open this up and start working with it. So I'm going to do open. Open the folder. When you open the folder, uh, WebStorm will create what's called a .idea folder, where it creates metadata for each project that you work on. That metadata does various things. Just go ahead and look up WebStorm and find out what those are. But we're going to open that up. This creates a new project for us. Let's see what we have here. Let's do a git status. Now, I don't want to check in that idea folder, so I'm going to add a git ignore initially to ignore that. I like to create my own git ignore files rather than from GitHub because I want to keep them lean. So let's put only what we need in there. Touch git ignore. Let's put in the idea folder. Save this. Let's do a git status. Let's go ahead and add this and push this up. I do very small commits. It's good practice. Okay, commit message. Let's just do this. Ignore idea folder. That's really what we're actually doing. So I'm using oh my Z shell. So GCMSG is git commit message. It's an alias for that. Let's go ahead and push this up. Oh, actually I can't because I don't have permission to. I'm actually trying to off into this via my personal account. But let's go ahead and add myself as a collaborator so I can actually push this up because this is using the TDD TV account. So for collaborators, let's so search for my name. Let's go ahead and invite myself. Let's go ahead and log out and accept that request. Should see a request up here now on my notifications to invite me to accept this invitation. All right, so we've accepted it. Now we should be able to push it up. Before we do that, I'm just going to sign back in with my TDD TV account again. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can push this. We should be able to now. And we can. Next thing we'll need is a package JSON. Let's just go ahead and create that. I'm going to create it with the yes flag, which goes as and says, hey, create a default package JSON for me. Don't prompt me for all of those prompts to go through and put special values in for it. I just want you to create it for me on the fly. So we've got a package JSON that's got the very minimal I need in here. Let's go ahead and remove the main here. I've just done an application at least yet, so I'm going to keep that out of here. This session is only dealing with getting the unit test up and running. Let's go ahead and add some folders in here and pretend this is going to be an application in the future. So I'm going to do a, let's do clear first, make directory src and cd to it at the same time. Let's also create a test directory. In this directory, I'm going to create a unit test folder because later I may have integration tests. For this screencast, we're only going to be uni doing unit tests, but I do like to combine those into one folder. Let's go ahead and create our first spec in here. So I'm going to spec that JS. Let's go in here and add some initial code to it. So I describe to it some tests. Also, Add a initial test to it to make sure we can actually run it. Can run a test. So this is just to see if we can get it running. So let's go ahead and see if we can run it. Obviously we can't because Jess has not installed yet. So you don't see an option in WebStorm to actually play and run this. So let's go ahead and install Jess first. So now you can see a play button because it knows that there's a test framework available to be able to run tests. Great. That's all fine and dandy, but what if you actually wanted to import a JavaScript module and start using some ES6? Let's try to do that. Let's create a new JS module. It's a simple thing. Let's 
good enough for now just to demonstrate the purpose of importing this. So let's go back to our test. Actually use this, pretend we're using this in our tests. This is not exactly how I'm going to use it, but it, it demonstrates how to uh, use more than just, uh, just a, a test with nothing in it. So if we run this, it's going to fail because just does not know how to transpile ES6 code yet. We're using an import statement from ES6. Just has no idea how to deal with that yet, but we're going to tell it how to do that using Babel. So let's go ahead and install Babel now. We'll need Babel Core, and we'll need Babel Preset, Preset Environment. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have here. I added the capital D flag to make sure it's added as a dev dependency. We also need a Babel config file so it can actually use the Babel core in Babel preset so that Jess can use it with it. So let's get out of here and go back to our root. All right, let's add a Babel config file. And let's configure Babel to use the minimum amount we need to be able to run these tests. I'm going to paste this in here and then explain exactly how this is wired up and what the, each is doing here. So the main Babel preset we really need is the preset ENV. And that's been created as more of a kind of a easy thing to use where you don't have to worry about all the transforms you have to add in here. It pretty much adds all you need for most transforms for ES6 with just this one preset. So it's a convenience thing by Babel that brings together all the transforms you will most likely need for your basic ES6, ES6 syntax. It's also important to point out that when you install Jest, Jest automatically installs a Babel Jest NPM module so that it's able to find your Babel config and use it. So Jest, it makes Jest aware of your, your Babel config. You won't see that in your package JSON, but it's there in your NPM modules. Let's see if we can actually run the test now. Let's go back to our tests. Remember, we're getting that error before. Let's see if we get that error still for the import statement. And we don't. So now the import statement works because Jest is now using our Babel config file, which is using the preset env, which provides the transforms, the transformations we need for the import and more. There's a couple things you can do with Jest tests. One, you can ignore them by putting the X next to it. So if I run this, it's going to ignore that test and not run it. It's going to show up yellow. Well, gray, I guess. You can also you can say, I only want to run this test and not the rest by putting an F in it. So fit, if you run this. Let's actually add two, but I'll show you. And we'll see that it only runs one test if we run our describe here. So there we go. Also, in WebStorm, if you want to rerun your tests, rather than have to click here every time or have to click here every time, what you can do is simply do a control R, which will do the same thing, much more convenient. <clears throat> also, notice that, also notice that when we first ran this, WebStorm creates a test config file for you automatically on the fly. So that's how WebStorm hooks up Jest and your tests together in a test run configuration. You can always come in here and tweak it. We're going to do that right now by adding a by adding a watch all flag to this so that any saves will rerun the tests after we make changes to our code. So since we've added that flag, if we go back into our component, change any code, save it, it's going to rerun our test for us. Some of you might not want to run this in WebStorm or with the WebStorm test runner. The alternative, of course, is to run your test in the command line. Let's go ahead and create a couple scripts in our package JSON to allow us to do this. I'm going to add a new scripts in here section. And since we only have unit tests, I'm going to say test unit. And that's going to run using the Jest CLI. We'll do Jest watch all. That's all we really need. So if we go to our command line and try to run this, I'm using yarn. And there we go. Now I understand there's a Jest init command that will set up Jest for you automatically. But I prefer to set up my test directories different. I don't like my tests next to each component actually when I TDD because my tests don't always end up one for one when I TDD a feature outside in. So that's fine if you like it. 
go ahead and use it. Otherwise, I hope this basic setup makes you understand how Jest works, how Babel works, how to get a basic test running, say if you're doing a kata or if you're just doing unit tests for starters in your project. Because these basics will come back at you even if you use Jest init later. You'll need to know how these things actually wire up. Let's go ahead and commit this code. And remember this code's up there for you to bring down and play with. But of course, we forgot to tell our git ignore file to ignore the node modules folder. So let's do that first. So what I'm going to do is just remove the node, mo node modules folder for now. Let's delete it. Because right now, we have our node modules folder staged. It's going to be pushed up, and I don't want that to happen. So git status, it, it detects I deleted it, which is good. And so that means it's going to be, if we do a git add again, it's going to unstage it for us. Now, let's add this to our git ignore, along with a bunch of other ones I typically use. We'll add those two. One final thing I want to show you is how to get some IntelliSense in here for Jest. You'll notice that in WebStorm, it can't tell what describe or you know what expect is. So let's actually make it aware of it. Let's do command comma to get to the preferences. We'll go to JavaScript for frameworks, JavaScript, libraries, and we'll download the Jest, definitely typed library. There's also other helpful libraries such as Babel Core to give you IntelliSense for Babel Core. We'll go ahead and use that too. And now notice WebStorm is able to resolve things like expect, it, and describe. I can control click into it and it knows what it is and where it's at. Well, that's all for this session. I hope you learned a lot.